Well, we're launching another product. This is Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And this is Roger, who designed it. Um, Roger, what's new with Raspberry Pi 3 Plus? So, uh, quite a lot. Um, I'll start in the center. Um, we've got the same processor as before, but we've got a new package for it, uh, and it allows us to add this heat spreader as well. Um, so that's given us the, the chance to boost it from 1.2 gigs to 1.4 gigs. This is still 2837. Right? Still 2837, just in a, a new package uh, to, allow, uh, to increase power integrity and give us this. And better thermal performance yeah, as well. Thermal. In this corner, we've um, done a lot of connectivity updates. So um, we've now got 5 gig and 2.4 gig Wi Fi, uh, Bluetooth 4.2 and Bluetooth LE. We've got a uh, a new dual band antenna from the, the same people who did the one on Zero W. So, so previously, so Raspberry Pi 3 has a chip antenna along the yeah. edge there. And, um, then, and people noticed that Zero W has better Wi Fi, although it doesn't have a chip antenna, it's got a PCB antenna. So she got generally better Wi Fi performance than, uh, than, than 3. Yeah, yeah and we um, took all that learning from Proant and we um, put it onto this board. So this one's a, a dual band antenna, so it adds some extra uh, capacitors in there for tuning the cavity, but, but uh, yeah. Equally good uh, performance, if not better. Cool. And, it, and it's in a metal box? Yes. Um, so this is mainly around compliance. So the idea is that um, this, uh, the, having the shield around the, the radio circuitry allows us to call it a module. Mm -hmm. And so the whole board is actually certified as a radio module. Like one of those little radio modules, except with all of the rest of a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. yeah. So that, that means that we can say that, um, that when someone builds a product around Raspberry Pi, they can sort of avoid a lot of this compliance testing because they can take our reports because uh, it's a module and just uh, hand them on and that's... So that's previous, cool. Previously people were having to go back to, they were having to do everything from scratch, right? Even be, obviously people have been using the integrator program, we have the Raspberry Pi integrator program, but people were still having to redo all, once you add new components to it, having to do, redo all of, their, all of their testing. Here, I guess although it's, although it's got a radio on it, you only need to do the non-radio bits. You only need to redo the non-radio bits of the testing, right? The unintentional radiation and the immunity testing. It's a factor of 10, right? Yeah, Pretty it's much. a in massive cost, In terms of cost and effort, it's roughly a factor of 10 um, uh, uh, saving. So that's kind of fun. That's the, that's the wireless end of the connectivity package. What's happened on the wired end on the other corner of the board? So we've um, changed our South Bridge uh, to another product from, from Microchip, um, and this has given us uh, much faster Ethernet. So we're seeing two to three times the previous performance. We're not using the G word. We're not, but um, it's sort of, uh, I would say, pseudo gigabit yeah. Ethernet. <laughs> it's gigabit Ethernet, so at a physical level it's gigabit, gigabit Ethernet, but it's bridged, still bridged over USB 2. Uh, so you're seeing probably you know, a maximum of 250 to 300 megabits um, uh, on, on the line. Which is a, a, a great bump from what it was before. It's really healthy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you'll notice we've sort of grown an extra header up here. Um, part of the change from for the, the new Ethernet was that we added in power Ethernet um, transformers into here. So these are the taps from this transformer. This will allow you to plug in uh, a hat board that will be launching soon that um, basically allows you to power your board over, over Ethernet. Uh, 48 volts coming in on the Ethernet cable, yeah. comes up through that header onto a hat which regulates it down to 5 volts and then injects it back in through the, uh, through the G-Power yes. connector. Yes. And uh, also adds a fan, yeah. should you need one. Um, and we're kind of hoping, I guess, that you know, people are going to um, for a lot of industrial use cases, may, maybe some signage use cases, this reduces the amount of you don't need to have it. You can network boot, you can network boot and we obviously we're much better at network booting. In this version, we've rolled up all of the bug fixes. Gordon's rolled up all the bug fixes uh, from a year or two of, um, uh, of, of Ethernet booting into the boot ROM inside the 2837. Um, so you can stick this at the end of a piece of powered Ethernet and that's really the only thing you need to run your Pi. Yeah. Uh, it should be good for some of our industrial. Some of industrial and signage customers. Yeah, it goes back to the compliance side of things. We're sort of learning how people are deploying these things and trying to make it better for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing, it's it's kind of a neater looking board, right? It's a tidier, uh, it's a tidier looking board. Things seem to have changed down in this corner next to the power jack. Yes, so we've um, had a custom uh, power supply from Max Linear designed. So this is a four uh, switch mode uh, power power supply. Um, so it's um, IPC controllable and, and basically sort of hoovers up a lot of the, the shrapnel on the board of like the, the discrete LDOs that we had in the past. Yeah. Um, so we originally had we had, a, we had a separate, so we had separate switches. We had a, a dual switcher for 1v8 and 3v3. Yeah. Uh, we had a, an ITC and those, those were fixed switches. We had a controllable, an ITC controllable switcher for the core voltage. Yeah. Um, and 
um, which back in the day on Pi 2, of course, was the, the product that gave us the, that gave us the Teflon death flash. <laughs> um, uh, and then we had an LDO for an SD RAM braille, which is now a switcher. We had two LDOs for the yeah. SD RAM. We had a, a, an audio LDO. Yeah. Um, and lots of that's been sucked into that corner. So this is why it kind of looks tidier. And of course, that's uh, because the, the, this switcher has, it has better static regulation accuracy, and has a better load step performance, and both of those then turn into those. Those are both contributors along with the changes that have happened in the, in the main chip. That, oh, those are things that contribute directly to that 200 megahertz uplift in, yeah, uh, yeah, so in, in, in uh, frequency. Yeah, and that's all, yeah, yeah, it's all resulted in a much better yeah. uh, performance profit. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, I like this board because it's, a, because it's an attention to detail product. It's like the, it's like the, the, the Raspberry Pi 1B, um, so 1B Plus, where we looked at all the things after a couple of years, we uh, looked at all the things that people had done with the 1B and all the things they'd liked about it and all the things they hadn't liked about it. And then James did us a spin that kind of aggregated together fixes, you know, improvements for all of those things. It's the same thing. So this is the same thing done to Raspberry Pi 3. Um, great little product. Yeah. And it's been a, it's been a, it's been a long year, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, I think the, the thing we noticed is sort of everything's been turned, everything's got a lot more yeah. complex, but, you know, it's the same, uh, same sections on the board, you know, it's got the same features, it's just they've all been muchly improved, so it's, uh, it's led to a certain amount of... Uh, Interesting. It's well, been, yeah, we've had a we've had a we've had a busy year, but you know, I think we're I we're pretty proud of it, right? Yeah, so I'm pretty proud. People are going to like it. Yeah, I think it's um, it's an answer to a lot of things that people have been looking for. So. Yeah, Raspberry Pi three B plus.